Hi, hello, I'm Matthias, it's Georg here, and today I'm in Nuremberg at the Embedded World. Don't be astonished, this one is the, the, ad, uh, the advice to next year's exhibition, but on the other side of this sign, there is the one from today and the uh, day after tomorrow. It's a three days period, three days period to stay here in Nuremberg for the Embedded World. That's one of the biggest exhibitions belonging to the Embedded Realm, so we have tools and hardware and um, and additional software, uh, uh, internet of things, machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication, lots of things, more than, I don't think, I don't know exactly, but something like 10 or 20,000 square meters available as exhibition area. So it's quite a huge exhibition here. And today I have traveled here for you guys that you get some kind of invitation, that you get some kind of information about what's going on in the embedded world here today, now in Nürburgring. I wanted to stay for two days and on day number one I wanted to concentrate on hardware, distribution and services. And these affairs are located in hall number one, two, three and I think four, four A. So it's distributed over a, a, a big amount of place and or a big amount of space and I want to invite you to join me. Let's see us later. The journey to Nuremberg was no problem. A four hours ride on the rather empty autobahn very astonishing indeed. Regularly it is really crowded, but perhaps the time I traveled was the best. Main problem in Nuremberg, parking place. But nothing compared to day number two, as I found out later. By the way, the entrance to Embedded World is free. Of course, you can spend 25 euros for daily fee. However, most of the exhibitors offer free entry vouchers. So it is of some benefit to reach out for the free entry before starting your visit. Somehow around noon time, I entered the halls. In my first round, I got aware of TSD touch systems and displays. While often displays with very strong glass in front, hammering on the display glass is something you regularly should avoid. But here it did a great job and it also was a very good example how eye catchers work. You simply get trapped by this hammer. The trapping was even higher at Basler, vision for embedded. I was attracted by the smell of German bratwurst on the krill. First it was unclear for me what's the intention of their presentation. Is it the robot? The sausage? The grill? No, it were the cameras and the underlying logic to drill the bratwurst. Unfortunately, the list of subscribers was too long and I've had to concentrate on the technical details. The list of available types of cameras was amazing. A lot of different resolutions, many many sizes, several cabinets or supportive harnesses are possible. The cameras themselves are very massive, so I've had this strong feeling of a real mechanic in my hand. One of the biggest advantages are for sure the standard connections where support USB 3.1 or Ethernet. Everything needed is directly implemented in this small box of heavy metal. At Advantech's booth, Greg Brown explained to me why you need to have supervision of displays at public places. It's vibra vibration sensor to make sure when it's touched. Um, it's also yeah, proximity sensor, so it'll actually turn on when someone is close. If they're further away, then it may not. All of these options are configurable within this, um, within this platform. Um, and I, so basically, it's, it's, it's increasing the uptime of, of displays, so making sure that they're constantly working. Because, for example, in the advertising uh, market, if somebody pays for advertising space yeah you have to they, go you have, to uh, exactly you have to say okay this monitor has been on for x number of hours it's been showing this advert because they want to know that uh, and, and the amount of people that's seen the advert if the display is damaged and it goes down then they say okay well i'm not going to pay you because no one's seen my my advert so um <laughs> it's a it's a quite a powerful tool for us to to be able to to sell this along with a, a range of displays as well so. And then we have a stretch stretched display, so it could be passenger information display, high, bright, for outdoor environments. Areas like train stations or whatever where yeah. they, they can easily be damaged and no one will ever know for a few days until someone... And also as a cost reduction tool to then having to stop sending engineers out. and says, OK, there's one display down, they can look and say, oh yeah, OK, well, it got damaged here because of a punch or whatever, then we can send an engineer out. They could just say, oh, actually, it's it's not working at the moment because there's no one close to it. Yeah. Um, okay. Walk close to it and then 
You can even down to the fact of the, 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 the having power. Well, and then there was Intel with its statement, experience what's inside, and we have presented the BMW i8 as some kind of virtual reality car, but I think only the experience how it will be to drive such a car was virtual, but the other things were very natural, not very real, because the guys have had the opportunity to sit inside of the car with these 3D goggles on their noses, it was a long crowd in front of the booth and therefore it was not the time for me to stay. But it's an amazing car and I would be really happy to have such a car in my garage, of course. Of course, there is no embedded world without IoT nowadays. As one typical example, I visited IEI with their innovation gateway to IoT. Inside the QDS, we have a surveillance station. Okay. It's about four camera free. Okay. So this one is there. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, we, we just built one. And mm -hmm. support four cameras free. And yeah. you can add a 32 or a 64. It's okay. And the other one is the control room here. Yeah, the server room here. And show the temperature and all the control. And it, it can all remote control by your cell phone. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. Running an application, mm -hmm. and for example, we I, you want to open this door, open, you go through cloud and open it. Oh, then we have temperature control. It's with the fan control. Now the setting, the setting is thirty degrees, so I turn it twenty. Okay. Then about 10 seconds, you can see this fan. You can hear the sound. And Qualcomm takes over the challenge of IoT. Nowadays, you could see many more practical examples how IoT could be integrated into daily life situations. For example, your house automation. And we have here a lot of connected different items into in different rooms from a central processor board using a regular ARM controller. You have, for example, the user interface connected either di by a direct HDMI connection or via Wi-Fi. Or on the other side, you can use external loudspeakers to deliver sound or also messages. That's one of the major difference, differences to last year's embedded world, but this year we see a lot more of practical examples how IoT could see or could be realized in the real world. Also, IoT security has become a major aspect within the IoT realm, and I will provide an extra episode in the Mastering Embedded Systems podcast about these details. I got some very interesting contacts for that. At the booth of Microchip, I have had a good talk with Lorman, yes, about IoT and the microchip's big variety of small systems, small boards, realizing different aspects of connectivity. For example, he showed me a bridge between USB 3.0, USB 3.1 to 1 gigabit Ethernet. We have had an example with four Raspberry Pis connected with an Ethernet switch, transferring data completely transparent between Ethernet and USB. Main example for the usage is inside the automotive industry to transfer a big amount of data internally, in, uh, internally of a car or internally of a vehicle. For example, the new video surveillance system, self-driving vehicles or in the parking assistance. Very often we do use big MCUs inside of automotives. However, we do not have SGMII interfaces and then we also do not have FI devices available. So no, no direct connection to the outside via regular buses. But we very often do have USB connection. And then such a USB to Ethernet bridge can connect all items with the remaining systems in the car without any problem. The next example Laurent presented to me was a fail-safe gigabit Ethernet switch. So we have hardware reliability built inside. Four cameras are connected in a circle. So it could be even more cameras, of course, but in this example, it's four. All packets are routed either one way or the other way in the circle itself. So if you now interrupt the connection at one location, the packets are routed via the still available other connection in the other direction. If the open connection is closed again, the packets are again flowing in both directions. So typical example, again, in vehicles, Failure recovery based on hardware. It's essential and ensures the vehicle's reliability.
first day is gone and first day is done, first day is ready and uh, I have mainly visited only the hardware related parts here, so with the hole number one, number four and partly also number five and this is a quite challenging part for all these details to combine them again and again but I'm really excited to see what will bring day number two and yeah, have the details available there where I might be uh, more into the tools and the services and all these other interesting details which are belonging to embedded systems at all. So come with me, join with me next day tomorrow and there will be another video or there will be a continuation. So let's see us again. See you guys. Bye bye.